And good evening. It is September 25th, 7 p.m., and I will call this meeting of the Stowe Board of Selectmen to order. And we'll begin, as we always do, with public input on any subject that is not on the agenda. Anything? We're beginning with public input. Hi, Janet. I know what you're here for. Uh, public input on anything that's not on the agenda, and there is nothing. Um, <coughs> Chairman's comments, just a couple of things. Um, we got a very nice, Maureen, thanks for sharing this. We got a very nice certificate, certificate of funding for the Department of Transportation gives you, which is very nice. $265,134 for our Complete Streets program. Um, this represents funding for three projects. Um, uh, a bike path from Lower Village, bike lane from Lower Village to the center of town right here, 117 and 62. Um, pedestrian improvements on at the Hudson Road, Great Road intersection, and unfortunately, I forget the third. Um, but you know, this is we don't get money like this every day, and this is this is just terrific. And I like the nice, pretty little certificate that they sent us. Can they stepped up their game. Yeah, they have. This is something new. I've been in the business a long time, but they get, have now you get your money's worth from the government. You start I mean, let's certificates. Not, let's not go nuts about it. It's just a piece of paper, <laughs> and you can do this with software. Check, right? So, can, can you cash that? Yeah. We, that's a really good question. I assume there's a check that comes with it. I would hope, right. or at least a direct deposit. We'll look into that, Linda. We'll make sure there's an actual check with it. Thank you. Um, I also want to mention that um, the moderator is holding office hours at the library um, this Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. to talk about town meeting process and procedure. This is a really great idea. Um, so, and this is not for town officials, this is for any citizen who wants to ask questions sort of privately about how town meeting works. And, you know, it, that, that's a really good subject. It's hard to figure out town meeting sometimes if, you're, if you don't go to it all the time. Um, he's actually holding it two times, 10 to 11 a.m. on Thursday, as well as 7 to 8 p.m both at the Randall Library. Did you want to add something? I was just going to ask that we didn't have a Stowe's meeting. Yes. And this is, a, this is um, because we are just having a couple of boards that had the topic, so we met individually with them. So normally people could, the public could come to a Stowe's meeting and see and ask questions as well. Thank you. And then finally, um, on a far sadder note, I just want to extend the town's uh, condolences to uh, Carol and Jean-Claude Soreau on the loss of their son, Michael, a few days ago. Um, Carol, <coughs> Carol and Jean-Claude are longtime uh, public servants have been very important to this town. Um, and we ex extend our condolences and they're in our thoughts and prayers. All right. Um, we have a set of minutes from our last meeting of September 11th. Thank you, Maureen. Can I make a suggestion since most of the, or half of the people that were here last time, I can't vote because I wasn't here. Maybe you want to put it off to the next meeting? Um, I can do that, certainly. Um, technically, yeah, that's probably the better thing to do. So let's put the minutes off to the next meeting. Um, Ingeborg, did you have any edits? We might no. as well take the opportunity to make I didn't have any edits either. I um, actually found one issue. Is you adjourned at 745. You can't vote on him, but he's going to have to. I just noticed, you know, you're asking, uh, Mr. Wrigley left at 840, but you adjourned at eight, at 745. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure he would have been gone. <laughs> what? You don't believe that? <laughs> he sat here. You know, I, I just have you to remark. Be certain about that. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't hang around for an hour? I just have to remark, Tom. So did you get that? Yeah. Um, fix that. Yeah. Um, when I miss a meeting and there's a set of minutes that I'm not going to vote on, I have to admit, I don't even read them. But you read them close enough. It's really great. Terrific. I wanted Thank to you. find out what happened. <laughs> no, that's true. I guess I do glance. Did I miss anything? Like <laughs> uh, other than um, Bill hanging around for an hour. And uh, so next up on our agenda is correspondence. I don't know if my colleagues have had a chance to take a look at the correspondence. It's a little lengthy this time. Um, is there anything in it that you want to uh, call out for a future agenda? There's some notes about some of these. Did you see these? Um, I, I saw all of it, yeah. Okay. So um, is there anything that anybody wants to put on a future agenda? I don't. Okay. I've read the whole thing, but. Well, and if you want to take your time with it, you know, I'm, 
we have this on the agenda, but really you can send me an email at any time <laughs> and say if there's something you want on the agenda. So yeah, I read through it. I didn't see anything. Okay. okay. Um, and next, Janet, uh, do you want to join us for a special one-day liquor license for the Conservation Trust? Sure. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Just for the record, and everybody at home, state your name and the organization you're here for. Uh, Janet Custom Moffat, Stowe Conservation Trust. Yes. And what can we do for you tonight? So Stowe Conservation Trust has our annual meeting every November, and we're back up again. Uh, this year we're going to try it a little different. We're going to have it at the community center at Pompo. Probably, uh, if everything lines up for a while, we'll have it more family-centered with a hike followed by some kind of uh, presentation that would involve animals is what we're looking for, followed by dinner, potluck. And so as part of the potluck, people bring uh, um, wine and beer, hard cider maybe, and um, has not been known to get out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's never gotten out of hand. <laughs> That was one of the questions, wasn't it? Yeah, that was to get out of hand or not? <laughs> no. I figured that's why. I was Maybe here. we should try harder to make it get out of hand. Yeah, that's right. I was looking at you planning on having a heck of a party for eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the only thing is, um, so you're not selling it. It's just no, we are shitty. not selling okay. it. Um, and I know Mr. Burko has asked this question so in his absence. I'll ask him. So will you have an adult designated to be distributing? The, the alcohol, <coughs> someone who can screen people as they come up to get it? We don't typically. Does it bring your own more? No, it, no, I mean, usually it's a potluck and wine is as potluck as everything else. It's so just set out there it's for people to It's just set out there for, yeah. Um, I think it would be much better if you had someone, you know, not necessarily someone paid, but someone screening it and handing it out, even if you're not selling it. Uh, I don't know, do my colleagues agree? I, well, I think, sorry. Go, go for it. <laughs> I think what we're typically looking for is that there be a responsible party there. And whether that actually means someone has to stand there and pour it, or whether someone's just in charge or responsible for the activities that evening, I think that might work, in my opinion. Mm. And I'm, I'm pretty much good with that, too. I look at this, especially where it's not being sold, we put in a policy that we want to issue a liquor license for any alcohol that takes place in the community center. They're not selling it. Um, as long as somebody is pretty much monitoring it, I look at this as we're, we're giving them permission to have alcohol at the community center versus actually issuing a liquor license. So I'll, I'll defer. But I, I think this is raising a future agenda topic that I may want town council's opinion on, um, because I think we're, uh, we are in a legal area that I'm somewhat familiar with. Um, and I'd like to get his input on it, and maybe we should kind of fine tune our expectations a bit more. Now, I don't think we should do that tonight on Janet's application, but uh, this is at least the second time that we've had this discussion and I've felt a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so I will add this to an agenda at some future day. I, I know we've done this before, had a responsible person yes. identified, yeah. but I'm they don't a, pour the drinks. And I, that's what I want to examine. I'm not sure that that's sufficient. I to think protect the us. distinction with the difference between a liquor license and trying to respond to exposure to liability yeah. are separate but related. So in the past, it's generally been <clears throat> is a liquor license, and it's not required under the liquor license if it's not being sold. But I think what you're alluding to is that we have liability in whatever we do under, you know, liability laws. And so perhaps something along the lines of either you know, an indemnification, separate liability insurance from the others. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily fold it under the, a liquor license. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there are, there's a, now a lot of developed law about social host liability, right. which is, is certainly, and, it, and the requirements are now fairly well st stated. 
I'm not sure that we've incorporated all of those into our informal policy. You're absolutely right. Um, what you're proposing to do tonight is completely consistent with what we've done in the past, so let's do it. But let's have a policy discussion going forward and examine whether we want to change it. And I'd like to get town council's opinion on it. Yeah, I've, okay. al I've always felt funny signing a liquor license that says they're going to sell it when they, we know they're not going to sell it. So, but, yeah. uh, but at the same time, I've gone along with it because essentially what we're doing is we're giving approval to have beer and wine on town property. And I think my point is that the yeah. SJC has now laid out some pretty clear rules and they hold you liable if you don't follow them. And if you do follow them, you're okay. And I, let's just make sure we're following those rules. Yeah. More so. important than counsel, in my opinion, is our insurance company. Yes. I think their attorneys yes. we should be speaking with because in the end, it's the coverage we decision. want coverage. And so that's, that's the route I would go. I think that's a better idea. So let's, let's do that. But the point is, let's make it a future agenda item. Mm -hmm. It's unfair to change policy on the fly <coughs> in front of, and uh, Ingeborg is absolutely right. What's being proposed is perfectly consistent with what we've done in the past. Um, so, any and further we discussion? Will maintain responsibility. Any further discussion? Nope. Would you like a motion, sir? Please. I move to approve and sign a special one day liquor license for the Stowe Conservation Trust annual meeting at Pompo Community Center on Saturday, November 10th. 2018 between 2 and 10 p.m. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve and sign a special one-day liquor license for the Stowe Conservation Trust for their annual meeting at Pompo on Saturday, November 10th between 2 and 10 p.m. All those in, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. And that's unanimous. Thank, thank you, Janet. Thank you. And I'll just add that thank Stowe Conservation Trust for all the hard work they do for preserving Stop. Yeah, we'll yeah. come Thank celebrate you. at the annual meeting. And you had a big year. We did. Yeah. Yes. So you can pick that up tomorrow whenever it's convenient. $25. Okay, how late are you guys open? Okay. Six. Figure it out. Um, no, not six. Four. Okay. You all set? I'll figure it out. Okay, yep, call me if I can. Okay. Thanks. Good morning. Send it Thank you. Um, next, we have the uh, appointment of a highway department equipment operator. Bill, this is part of your activities report. You just want to fold that part of your activities report. I can say it now. Yeah. It's on the agenda, yeah. So. Mike is recommending. It. Go back a bit. So, with Scott Morris's retirement as assistant superintendent, the board uh, promoted Brian Hatch from um, crew chief up to assistant superintendent. So it is <coughs> Brian's position that is actually open. But it, um, Mike and Brian, and I believe Scott, uh, participated in the conversation before he actually left that it would be more important, there's a bigger need in the highway for an equipment operator, you know, boots on the ground as opposed to a crew chief. There are two crew chief positions. This is one that's unfilled, the other one is filled. The feeling is that a single crew chief is sufficient <coughs> along with an assistant superintendent and superintendent for a department that size. So there's an opening, which was Brian's position, but rather than a crew chief to replace that. In addition, they weren't persuaded that there was someone in the department with the requisite experience to be promoted. Sure. And so they have, a, in their opinion, a greater need for an um, equipment operator. So that's what they advertised, posted rather. And the recommendation by Mike is for, um, is it Jake Babcock? He's been with us two years. He was hired in the cemetery department and has been functioning since that time. However, under the effort that I started several years ago to begin sharing resources, particularly between those two, other departments as well, but highlighted those, um, he's been providing equipment operator services to Highway on an as-needed basis, and he wants this job, goes to that job. Essentially, what I, what I would do is then realign where the direction and supervision is coming for Jake from a cemetery as assistant superintendent 
to highway. So Jake would then work part-time on an as-needed basis in the cemetery under the direction and control of the highway superintendent as opposed to the other way around. So essentially now he's directed and supervised by the cemetery on loan to um, highway. So, and from my perspective, it improves the efficiency and cost effectiveness um, of what we've already begun. So I support strongly Mike's uh, recommendation. So if this is replacing or in lieu of a crew chief, I assume there's a positive budget impact? Yes, in both places. Okay. Because in addition to that, what I've stated to you is that at this moment, I don't intend right. to fill the assistant cemeteries um, commit the superintendent's position, but rather, and it doesn't mean over time if I'm persuaded differently on my successors, you could go back. There's nothing irreversible here. But it's been my opinion for some period of time, and I think I've expressed it, that um, I don't believe we need that level of resource there that we've had, and so I don't intend to fill that position at this time until persuaded differently. So we'll have that savings, which is around $40,000 for the assistant superintendent, and the rate that Jake is going to receive, that step schedule is lower than the crew chief. Questions? I was going to say, you know, a lot of it makes sense too because Jake is really trained up so he can backfill if um, GH goes on vacation or something like that because he already knows ever knows the deal and we're probably more likely to hang on to him too and you know a guy who's turned out well. So. And to be truthful I think he aspires over time to maybe become the cemetery superintendent. But in any event I think for limited resources we're certainly going to get a more co cost effective result from this arrangement. Questions? No. So, I, I, I have no problem with this. I know we are technically the hiring authority for police and fire. Actually, the appointing authority. Appointing authority. As a practical matter, it's one and the same. Right. Because of what, what's usually called the weak chief. Statute. Well, it, so the weak chief relates only to police and fire. But right. in our governance agreement, our town charter, if you go to the back end of it, there's a list of appointments that it expressly says the board has to make. Or, in fact, you could delegate it to me. And then the presumption is, and we've operated this way, is the chief personnel officer, which is myself, would, be, would have the authority for the others. But clearly, where it says, these are yours to appoint, then I've already hmm. said, and that's what it says. And it not only says highway superintendent, it says highway personnel. So, as a practical matter, it's similar to what the weak chiefs for fire and police are, which is you're the appointing authority and the approving authority for rules and regulations on the public state on fire and police. Not so with regard to highway. <coughs> it's limited because the statute drives the other one. And this is just our governance agreement. But you appoint a long list of folks, and mm -hmm. so early on when I arrived here, it was agreed that where it says you do, you do. It doesn't mean you couldn't tell me on a on a case by case basis. And it's happened if we're only halfway through the hiring um, process and I say, look, at this point I still have to negotiate or agree to the rate or whatever, you can say, okay, fine. In this case, that's not where we are. But so that's what the government's agreement. for myself, I'm, I understand why we're the appointing authority for public safety. I mean, you want, you want to hear about the background checks, you want to hear about that everyone's done their their, their due diligence. This, it's in the charter, so we'll do it. But this strikes me as getting a little deeper into the day-to-day -day management that I really like. Um, so maybe something at some point to. So the charter uh, review, which the governance agreement presupposes would happen, I think, more often than it has. Yeah. Um, that could be one of the things to look at because I agree with you, and maybe before my departure, I along with other recommendations I might have, that would be another one that we could make improvements or at least have that discussion yeah. if it results in an improvement or not. But I agree with you because it expressly says at the very beginning of the chat, the intent expressed and implied is two things. One is that the selectmen, are, and it says so, are to <clears throat> restrict themselves, their involvement into policy making only. Right. And then it says 
Management. operational, day to the operations is the responsibility. Yeah, and my job description, uniquely, is basically in the governance agreement. And so that's, that's you know, that's an important um, provision distinction t to know, um, especially for people who want to take on this kind of job, because there's enough uncertainty in it and complications, but that kind of protection for this position, and I've always told folks, it's always been respected here by collectively and individually by the select persons that I've served, that that's what they, they do. They're policy makers, day-to-day -day operation stats here. And um, if you honor that, in many towns, that's where the fighting stats. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Um, but it's in the charter, so uh, a vote is in order. And, uh, would you like a motion, sir? I would like a motion. I move to authorize the town administrator to appoint Jake Babcock as equipment operator for the highway department. Second. Uh, motion is made and seconded to authorize the town administrator to appoint Jake Babcock as equipment operator for the highway department. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Thank you, Bill. Um, so next we're going to finalize, I guess finalize, the um, warrant for the special town election and set the date. Linda, do you want to town clerk Linda Hathaway? So, yes. Um, so first we're going to sign the state warrant and, um, that we have. Which we I think have that's item, item number seven. Which we have copies of. Yep, and I actually... <coughs> Yeah, that was the draft. This is the one in line Yeah. Yeah, no, it's obviously a draft. So I have the right um, with the things with the today's date um, instead of an October date. But, um, so I have two, um, two that to sign. Uh, it's a multi page. It includes the three ballot questions that will be there. I think most everybody received their red voter instruction booklet from the state in yes, the mail. Yes, just the other day. Yeah, so there's more information here. Anyway, we have to get this posted. and. Um, so this is the first of the three things we're going to do with regard to the election tonight. So yeah, um, well, this is this is the primary reason for November sixth. Right. This is the warrant for the November state elections. Correct. And all the big offices that are on it. So right. do I have a motion. I will make a move. I move that the selectmen accept and sign the warrant for the November state election to be held Tuesday, November sixth, two thousand eighteen, at Center School, four hundred three Great Road from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept and sign the warrant for the November state election to be held on November 6th. <coughs> Any further discussion? It's not like we can change this thing. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I, keep, so I keep asking what happens if we say no. And, yeah. and I can tell you. Uh, you've looked that up since then, huh? Yes. The then second, you take us the to court. No, I won't. The Secretary of State would take us the top of Stowe to court. There you go. <laughs> Okay. Because it's, re you know. Well, that's something we can talk about. Well, yeah. Anybody want to do that? No, no, no okay. that's okay. Let's, let's not. Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. I think they'd also, <clears throat> um, it would affect your cherry sheet. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Oh. And now it's money to me, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'd prefer if you <clears throat> It's just an idle question that Mr. Yeah. Ryan is asking, so. Yeah. No, and it's kind of interesting that, you know, because the, the selectmen are responsible for calling the elections and signing the warrants. and. Yeah, some of the laws just don't make sense, but right. yeah. this is we're just going to do it, get it done, and we'll get it posted. And um, information is online. We do have absentee ballots that are um, our overseas ballots went to our military and overseas citizens. They were required to be sent out by um, Federal Help America Vote Act. Um, they were sent out Saturday, and um, all of us in the state have done it. It's actually a requirement nationwide, but I think Massachusetts had a good turnout. We got all ours out. Um, but absentee ballots for this election should be in my office um, probably definitely the week of the, uh, the Columbus Day weekend, so that 8th, 9th, and around there. They could come any day, but we'll get prepared. And the deadline for getting an absentee ballot is, is noon what? the day before the election. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we can do it, but as soon as you get it in to us, you can get that, we can mail it out and turn it around if someone wants it mailed out, or they can vote it in the office. Okay. Um, we will, the state will also be holding early um, voting hours um, statewide from October 22nd through November 2nd. Um, it's during the clerk's regular business hours. Um, so um, we will also um, 
a hold. We're still in discussions trying to decide what um, we will hold some evening hours till 7 o'clock on probably a, the Tuesday and Thursday, um, the week before the election, because that was the highest turnout. That week was the highest turnout in 2016. So we think a lot more people will be engaged the week before. Um, and um, we, it's very possible that we will hold Saturday hours, um, October 28th or something, whatever one of that. But it'll all be in the newspaper, it'll be on our website. Okay, great, thank you. There's all kinds of requirements. Um, Debbie Scythe and I are attending the clerk's conference in Springfield on Thursday for that elections class to give us some more input and undo that. And of course then um, we also have our special town election, which you're gonna deal right. with on the next thing. So, um, so we have two elections going on. So people who are listening in, in the newspapers, um, to be sure that people, you know, there are, I know there are many people that come to the election that only want to vote in state elections, um, but people will just have to make sure that they're, they know what they want to vote on and if they want both ballots, because they get to choose whether they want one or both. But they can go to one, one clerk and get what? both ballots. No, they're going to go to two separate clerks and get two one separate ballot. clerks. Because it's two separate, separate elections, elections, two separate check-ins, um, and the reason that um, the last um, in the last time in, we did a dual election at a state election, we've done this, this third one, <laughs> and mo many people did not want the town election, did not know what they were getting, and it took and held up the line of the people who only won the state. So okay. our primary reason is let's move everybody out as fast as we can. And early ballots are available for the. Um, town election as well. Typically they're not, because, but because we're holding it on the same day, we have to do the same absentee and the same early voting. Okay. Twice as many things. And early voting will be done in town building, and but look for information on the website and in the newspaper. Okay. So, motions are made and seconded to uh, accept and sign the warrant for the state election. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So, when we sign? Yes, just sign two of them for, just in case one gets ripped up going through the printer. <laughs> yeah. you I had those happen. <laughs> you actually answered the one question I was going to have, which was, you know, what about the, the town election? That and one's so, coming after next week's town meeting. Right, but, but the thing <coughs> is, as far as voting it, you know, I was just, I, you know, you said that both ballots will be available for, for early, absentee ballot absent, and early. absentee and early because the the issue is the state election ones are going to be here first because they I mean they they're ready to go. I mean they mine I can't even send to the printer until after town meeting. The thirty five day mm -hmm. is up on June sec uh, yeah. October second. And I'm turning it right around the next day, getting those to the printer, so I get them turned around. And it's usually, you know, several days getting it turned around. Um, and as soon as the printer gets to me, then the town election ones are available. So you, if you come the week of October 8th or, you know, the 9th, right after Columbus Day, I might not have the town ones available, and that would have to be mailed, um, especially if they showed up in person. So let's get through the okay. uh, stuff we got to do. Our the next, next one. Our next task is to set the date for the special town election. Mm -hmm. um, this doesn't require too much discussion. Um, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Uh, I move that the special town election be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2018 at Center School, 403 Great Road from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Okay. Motion made and seconded to uh, hold a special town election on Tuesday, November 6, 2018, at Center School from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Any further discussion? Seeing here, no, that wasn't fair. Please signify, please signify by saying aye. 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 And that's unanimous. All right, and now we need to deal with the ballot questions um, for the special town election, which uh, should mirror whatever is uh, considered and voted at the town meeting. Do you want to explain this? We have a paragraph in our, in our material. Sure. So your um, <clears throat> the ballot questions um, have to be voted on by the selectmen to put them onto the ballot, and they have to receive them uh, 35 days prior to the election. Town meeting. <laughs> is 36. <laughs> yes. And so 
it that your motion is authorizing t the town clerk and town council to make the amendments if any f that town meeting makes so that you don't have to have another full meeting and vote to get it to me because they have to be to me on the 2nd of October by 5 p.m. So and that is the language authorization of the placement of questions on the ballot corresponding to articles three to nine in their current form and as may be amended by town. Correct. Okay. Now, despite that, <laughs> Maureen, you're recommending that at our pre-meeting before town meeting, which we haven't even discussed yet, but we probably will mm -hmm. have one, that we continue the meeting to the end of special town meeting. I assume you're doing that as a kind of belt and suspenders. Absolutely. Just keep to keep it open. We just simple vote to close at the end. Okay. So does everybody understand that? That um, in the the as I understand it, the language that goes on the ballot on November sixth has to be the same as whatever. If anything gets approved at town meeting, it must be the same in order to be effective. So in the unlikely event that there's some amendment to the language at special town meeting, there'll have to be a quick change in the language on the ballot this language would be flexible enough to allow the clerk and town council to make that change. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Is there a motion? I'll make a motion pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 54, Section 42C. I move to place the ballot questions in the attachment prepared by town council subject to an amendment from the October 1st special town meeting to be inserted by the town clerk or town council on the November 6, 2018 special town election ballot and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sign the final special town election warrant without further vote. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, place the ballot questions prepared by town council on the special town election ballot for the November 6, 2018 special town election and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sign the, this, the final special town election warrant without further vote. Any further discussion? I, I'm just going to just say that that final vote so that you could, um, I can post the warrant instead of coming back to another meeting with this, that you could just come to the office and sign the warrant. We'll still have to take the ministerial act of signing the warrant. Correct. Of not voting the language the town meeting vote. Right. If they vote anything. Right. That's yeah. that is just the administration part of it. So that I can sign the warrant because we could come to the meeting on October 9th, but if there's not a quorum or there's weather or sure. something else takes us out and we don't have that meeting, then I'm up the creek. That's because fine. I do, you know, and you didn't wouldn't have to call it. So that's what that piece means. So further discussion on this. Seeing hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said no. <laughs> now, Linda was reading my mind. I was just going to bring that up mm -hmm. that we we have to make arrangements to sign it. To actually all. sign it. Right. And it could be any time between the 2nd and the 10th or something. I'm going right. to try to get it posted early. Don't you have to send it out the 2nd? Or? No. Well, see, the see, we're talking two different things. Ballot question wording goes to the printer for the ballots. The warrant with the ballot questions on it is it's going to come back in this format with all the ballot questions and the summaries and then your signature page okay at the end and that's what's going to get posted so i have it's a so it's a printing thing it's it a printing continue. thing by the yeah and then the the the, the warrant cuz i won't have this done on the second right away i mean mm -hmm. we'll see no nope. right but I have to get this, the warrant posted for the special at a minimum of 14 days prior. So I'm backing it out and I build it <coughs> offers. Mm -hmm. So you remind us when, of, of the window we have to come and sign this. So I believe between, I, between maybe the 3rd and the 9th or okay. something like that, I will keep you all posted and okay. yeah. Yeah, we'll right. figure it out. Okay. But I, it's, I, I was wondering if we had to all get in. No, you don't have to come at once no. and you don't have to. Yeah, no, nope. I just it. need a so let's, majority. Let's take a vote on this. So uh, I think we all get it. Um, there's been no further discussion. Um, is there any further discussion? Seeing hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed nay. That's unanimous.
Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. We appreciate it. Sure. Do I need to copy that for my class? Yeah. Okay. I'll get you that. Okay. Yep. Um, Bill, do you want to cover the remaining part of your town administrator's report before we get to the <coughs> recommendations, which I'm going to save for last, I think? Okay. <coughs> I provided the board uh, with the information relative to a regional IT grant that was put together quickly. The deadline was upon us in a few days, but at the um, behest of Acton, who is going to be the lead community in this, should it be funded, nine communities in total have um, basically agreed that Acton could submit on our behalf a request for $149,000, which <coughs> represents a fee proposal by a company that would provide aerial photography, with the latest enhanced technologies for photography, of this nine town region, <coughs> the primary application of which would be for GIS purposes and the 149000 would cover the entire contract, which is what they're requesting, and the grant allows for a full cover of that. And just wanted to let you know that that was submitted last Friday. And basically the planning departments of the towns were active in this, and so in short order, no risk. Now, <clears throat> there is the prospect that a partial grant is received and not a full grant. Our commitment is conditioned upon a full grant. It doesn't mean if a partial grant comes back that, I mean, I believe the value of the service carved from the region that Stowe would value would be is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15000 So if a partial grant was awarded, you could apportion from that total back, and then if we were able to, depending on the timing of it and when the, mon the matching funds were due, to either come up with that amount of money or not. But it could be a, an amount that is within, say, the special article that we award the planning department each year, as I do some others as well, but, um, or the timing might be that we could be approaching a town meeting for that purpose. In any event, the, there was zero risk. Our planning department, um, our assistant planner, as you know, uh, is our GIS specialist as well. So there was quite a bit of interest from them. It's also, the results, this mapping, would be available on the local websites. And my understanding of it is, and I'm not involved in it enough to know, but I guess there's growing interest. There's a substantial amount of interest, and it's growing from residents and businesses that climb onto those websites with regard to that aerial mapping. And the detail that is provided on it, that the data and the information is, is pretty extensive. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that that was submitted. And we let you know. know. They're not certain. I, I, I think this is kind of a, um, there's no, I don't know, but a couple of months, I think, is what they're predicting. I don't think they have a date that the grant sponsors say, you know, we'll give you the award date. They make evaluative decisions as they go. Um, so, yeah. So if, I get, if I've got it right, if they give us 100 percent, the, there's no issue if they come back and say, we're only going to give you 80 percent of the grant, we then decide at that point whether we want to pony up. Our, our, our 20% of maybe the 15 grand, so it could be a couple right. grand at the outside. Mm -hmm. Something like, something along those lines. Well, we do know is we have a fee proposal, which is good right. because then you've got a hard cost, essentially, to work with instead of an estimate um, on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other um, piece I had for you is that uh, last Thursday, uh, Representative Kate Hogan sponsored a um, working meeting 
and it was held here at uh, Pompo, one of the activities room at the community center. Uh, with regard to the Gleason Deal Bridge, Mass DOT came out with a en representative engineer and the private uh, engineering consultant firm that they've hired to do the actual design development uh, of Representative Kane. Was w meeting was well attended locally. Um, Jim and Brian both came uh, as board members. We had, you know, most of our staff that's been engaged in it. Um, from, from my perspective, I, I wanted to get a sense of what the schedule looked like. And so what I've included in my activity report is the fact that they're on a path at this moment. They just completed what's considered 25% design completion, which is essentially a preliminary design. And they're projecting that by the end of the next calendar year, they hope to have completed design and have bidding documents and it might slip over to the early part of the following calendar year, 2020, but to be ready to go out to bid over the winter, which is, a, you know, for construction, that's, that's good a time. good time to be doing it. And that they hope then to be able to have a contractor on board. They didn't give any months here, but I'm thinking just to my own experience that by springtime you should be able to um, line up in a water contract. But that's my speaking. They, they did say that they expected that they will be, begin construction during 2020, which makes sense if they're completing it in 19, uh, even if it slips a little bit and that happens. They're thinking that some part of two construction seasons, given that they're not going to get, they don't think they'll get an entire construction season in 2020, but they'll be underway and then it finishes up in some, some part of 2021. Does that, is that what you... That's my takeaway from that. Yeah, I mean, at a less detailed level, I thought the good news was that the schedule hasn't really slipped from what we were originally told. Um, they put a little bit more detail on it. Um, they, there were the good questions about why this design takes so long when you must build bridges like this all over the state. And they had good answers to that. It's because each locality differs. And, you know, where the abutments have to go differ and wetlands encroach and utility lines have encroached and that's why it takes a long time. Um, a lot of, there were a lot of residents from Gleasondale there and it was good to hear uh, a lot of concern about walkability and bikeability and a lot of concern that whatever happens with this bridge is compatible with whatever we might do as part of Complete Streets. And the Complete Streets program, the Gleasondale, it, it's a high priority. It's actually one of the things we asked the state to fund in this round, and they didn't. It's not one of the three projects that got funded, but it's up there. Um, and they are definitely planning a uh, pedestrian walkway over the bridge. There was some good discussion about the handrails, keeping them looking nice, and they are planning a four-foot uh, bike path. Um, Five-foot is, for lack of a better, the, the state standard. My personal feeling, four-foot's fine. Um, and I think it's just good that they're thinking about that. Um, very well attended. I mean, the room at Pompo was full. There was standing room only, and that was good. There was a discussion, it coincided with the bridge, though it wasn't part of what would be bridge design and construction, and I was unaware of the fact that I guess there is a pathway right at the north side of the Gleasondale Bridge where people, kayaks, canoes, will park just on that side of the bridge wherever they can find room and, and pathway down, put their canoe or kayak in, and there was a question of whether that will stay. And I don't think that's a technical right away that anybody has, right. but wanted to know whether a, a, an official right away could be made there and then adequate parking and the rest. And I believe, without being blunt about it, Mass DOT was saying, don't think so. I mean, they're so. regulating it. Right. But the Kane property, which the town now owns, in that area, and, and I remember walking it back in the 90s when we were thinking of acquiring it. <coughs> because Roger Kane had started offering that property way back when. We were thinking of locating a well 
on that site, and that's still a, you know future prospect for a water source. And that property lends itself just by the the, the level, if no grade, going right up to the river's edge. Um, that maybe we look there for that purpose and just for other purposes for access to the acid bit rather than that. So whoever might be interested in that, um, providing that access could, I think, look at the cane property and maybe get away from the idea of, because there's a grade, there's a steep grade too. I don't, I don't think we'd want to be um, approving or uh, even stipulating that that path continue to be used for that purpose. In my opinion, there's, 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 got a, there's better access to the river. Thank you. Um, I think that any questions on town administrator's report? Okay. So uh, next, we want to get to um, our potential recommendations on the October first special town meeting warrant. And I have to ask Maureen, can I get a copy of the warrant? I left mine in the car. Oh sure. Well, I'll go get. It. Oh, okay. Okay. You got it right here? Yeah. Because okay. I, I have an electronic one, but I don't think it's the latest one. Um, here's how I wanted to approach this, if we could. Um, first, I want to take up, at the bottom of it, there's an article about uh, OPEM liability. I think it's Article 11. Um, I want to do that just because that's the one that Bill may have input on. I want to let him go as early as possible, if we could. Thank you, Maureen. Sure. Um, so this is the $7,500, I think it's $7,500, and I am sorry, it's Article 12, it's $7,500 um, to fund a, a financial consultant to develop um, an OPEP plan. Uh, Bill has covered this at a couple of meetings. Um, do we want to take, uh, just for everybody at home and a reminder of my colleagues, we're not like the Finance Committee, we don't have to take positions on any warrant articles, but Obviously, sometimes we want to, and sometimes we should. Mm -hmm. Do we think this is one that we should? I do. Um, I think I think there'll be three people left in the town meeting if, if by the time we get to this, but uh, I think it needs an explanation, which Bill should do, and I think it's important that we take a position showing that we um, recognize and care about the OPEP liability and that we want to take a strategic approach to it. I agree with you. Okay. I'll make um, a since there's only three of us, I'll make a motion we support okay. Article 12. Second. Motion made and seconded to support Article 12. Further discussion? Seeing, hearing none, all those in favor, see if I'm saying aye. 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 And that's it. Um, does anybody mind if Bill Skidal is out of here? Do you think we need him for the rest of it? I don't know. Um, Article 11, revolving funds. I don't know if that, well, I can comment. Essentially, this is this is the required change under the um, Municipal Modernization Act of now what, almost two years ago that the state is requiring revolving funds to be codified by bylaw. In exchange for that, what they've done is they've lifted the cap on the annual carryover amount. Oh. But so you don't have to go back each year as we and do and to see take that. Money but out in exchange that. for that, we have to get bylaws for our revolving account. Okay. So this is required. Uh, the town accountant basically has submitted that language up from DOR on that. Do you think we need to take a position on that? Or, or I think it needs a... Well, I, all I will tell you is that if you don't support it and the town doesn't vote it, we're in violation of statutes, but I, you know, if there's... I make a motion, we support Article 11. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? I'm motion not going to stand up and... <laughs> the motion's been made and seconded that we support Article 11. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please see by saying aye. 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 Okay. So, and we already have support. So, um, Bill, I think we can probably make it through the rest of the meeting without you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, back to the friendly town. There's a little tradition somebody hasn't mentioned the friendly town. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a Charlie. Um, so we've already taken the position in support of Article 1, the uh, zoning bylaw amendment. Ingeborg, I think we did that at a meeting you were not at, but I think we told you that at the last meeting, and I assume you're okay. So what did we vote, though? I, I know you did, but I don't remember. We, we voted to support it. Oh, that the, makes sense. The rationale basically being whether you are for marijuana yes. or against it, you vote a zoning bylaw. 
So our job tonight is to deal with everything in between um, 1 and 11, although not number 10, which is an easement. I'm assuming we're not going to take a position on that. I could be wrong. <coughs> so basically, Articles 2 through 9. The way I'd like to approach it, I think I want to take up Article 2 first, which is a little different. It's the local 3% tax option. And then I want to take up as a, as a block articles three through eight. So those are the ones that would potentially prohibit things like micro-businesses, manufacturers, uh, craft cultivators, testing laboratories, and see if anybody on the board wants to take position on any of those, and then get to the big one, article nine, which potentially prohibits retail. Does that sound reasonable? So these numbers don't match these numbers. So maybe that's just... Because this is, is a ballot, ballot question. Yeah. One. Just, I, I, um, it's not worth a big discussion. They, if we just talk know, about it as in here, yeah, it's fine. Th they wouldn't because this starts with question one on the election ballot is Article 3 because Articles 1 and 2 oh, don't need approval okay, at the okay. ballot. Thank you. Okay, now I understand. All right. So does, does my plan for how to deal with it, with this whole thing make sense? Is that okay, everybody? Yes. It's fine by me. Okay. So, Article 2, the local tax. Um, we've discussed this before. Uh, does anybody want to take a position on this? And if so, what? Right. Uh, so the choice is we can approve up to a 3% tax. Right. And we're reckon this right now says 3%. Right. So and I'll make a motion to um, approve. Support. Support. Thank you. I'll second that. And I'm assuming the rationale basically is if this happens, we might as well make some money off of it. Correct. Yep. Yep. Um, motion made and seconded to support passage of Article 2 at the town meeting. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Articles 3 through 8. So 3 is about craft cultivators, 4 is about independent marijuana testing laboratories. Five is about straight marijuana cultivators, six marijuana micro businesses, seven marijuana product manufacturers, and eight research facilities. Um, I think fair to say slightly less controversial. Uh, does, do any of my colleagues want to take positions on any of these? I will say I don't feel the need on any of these. Um, I, I'm to support them or to to take a position. Oh, to take a position. I don't have a, you know, I think we put these on to give the voters the maximum flexibility because we could. Um, I don't feel strongly enough about any one of these, one way or the other. Okay, well, then um, I agree with you. So well, we're making a motion. Yes. To support. take no position. Uh, if we're not going to take a position, I don't think a motion is necessary. Oh, okay, fine. Um, okay. And let's so also I'll say, obviously, there's only three of us here tonight, um, and I'm going to have a half-hour meeting before town meeting. One of our two missing colleagues wants us to revisit okay, any of these. I'm yes. going to I'm gonna listen to that. So. Okay, that's good. Um, right, let's lock it in. It they should have shown up. <laughs> um, all right, so we're not going to take a position on any of those. Um, Article 9, the big one about uh, retailers. Um, who wants to speak first? So just to clarify, it's my understanding that we can have up to 20% of the number of, we can have, oh, I'm sorry, I'm being an idiot right now, uh, package stores. We have five package stores, so or the ability to have five, so we could have up to one retail establishment. Yeah, so... If the bylaw passes, my understanding is that, and there's a good explanation on page five, the, uh, the bylaw pegs the number at 20% of our number of package stores, which currently would be one. If while this bylaw, I think, if, if while this bylaw is in effect, we have a population growth, I think you have to go over 10,000 to get allowed another package store license. <coughs> that number could potentially change, though I don't really know what 20% of six is. Um, 
Less right. than less than one and a half, which rounded down is still one. Right. So, in effect, assuming this bylaw passes, it's one. If the bylaw mm -hmm. doesn't pass, it's still one. Is it still it's one? I've always been confused about this. I I I beat on John about that, and finally he said it at a meeting that his considered opinion was. It was 20 percent because the way state the state regulations read is that in order to reduce it below 20 percent, you have to have a vote of town meeting and a town election. To raise it above 20 percent, you can do it by just town meeting vote. Therefore, we say that again. In order to we we could have more than 20 percent, right? by a uh, town meeting vote, okay. which we're not proposing. Therefore, the default is 20 percent. <coughs> the default is 20 percent. The default is 20 percent, because that's, that was one of my big sticking points right from the beginning. If you recall, I think yeah. the first marijuana forum, Jesse said that wasn't correct. I believe he now is a believer in that. Okay. But Does that answer your question? Up. That's the best answer we can come up with. No, right I now. just wanted to make sure we were all yeah. on the same page when we took our vote, whichever way we go. Who's got a recommendation on Article 9? Um, and obviously not taking a position is an option. I'm good with not taking a position on this one also. Really? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. I'm surprised. I want to hear what other people in town have to say. You know? Um, I, wa I didn't get a chance to go to the last um, uh, forum. I don't know what many people said there. Um, I've, I know I heard at the first one there were some people that were in favor of having it. Uh, in favor of the prohibition? No, in favor of uh, having, ha ha having marijuana. Ha retail. Having a, a retailer. I'm not sure which way I'm going to vote. Okay. So it's uh, fair enough. You know, again, I wanted to make sure that everybody in town had uh, had the opportunity to deal with this, and we can we can go from there. That's I don't, you know. <coughs> Ingeborg, <coughs> I agree with Tom. I think your response was very measured, and it allows for us to hear people, hear more people. I mean, I know you went to the forum. I did not go. I have heard different things individually, both sides. So I'm, I, I guess as I'm not willing to vote in, um, I'm not willing to vote in favor at this point or not. I think it's just to not take position and let because I kind of agree with you. I'm still collecting data on a personal level with respect to how I personally would vote. Mm -hmm. I think the planning board has done a wonderful job with the bylaw. I know there are concerns with that bylaw um, in certain parts of town and certain, you know, different. I know that any bylaw is going to be difficult, but that's not what we're talking about here. Right here, we're saying yay or nay on a prohibition. So I would prefer not to take a vote. Okay. Um, I have a different position, um, although I understand what you're saying. I mean, on something like this, it's really tempting to say it's, you know, what expertise do we bring to this? Everybody understands what it means. It, you know, it's not like town finance or something where theoretically we have more experience. <coughs> this is prohibiting marijuana retailers. Everybody understands that. Um, I'm actually in favor of voting in support of it for a few reasons. I have personal reasons that I'm in support of it, but that's not good enough to take, to use as a, in, as a position being a selectman. Um, I do believe <coughs> that if we have a marijuana retailer, there are gonna be some unpleasant surprises uh, in terms of costs, security, but also just what marijuana retail means and uh, marketing to children. I think we already see that with, not locally, but you know, vape shops in general and things like that. Um, but the big reason that I want to vote in support of it 
is that how many people are we going to get at this town meeting? 300, if we're lucky. It's a special in, the, in October. I want to move this question to the ballot. And the only way to do that, to have it have any meaning, is for town meeting to pass it. Because um, I want the electorate at the November 6th election, which ought to be pretty representative of the town, to make the final yay or nay on this. So that's, that's where I am. I actually think that's a fairly decent argument. Well, I guess I got lucky. <laughs> no, I, th I, you know, I, th I think it. I think it's also a, a very valid argument because, as you said, there's going to be three, four hundred people. All right. Um, I think tonight, I'm not willing to take a uh, a position on it. I think your thought that we can revisit this at prior to town meeting, um, but your thought process on just moving it to moving it to the election could sway me because I think that you know I, I want to give the most people possible um, a shot at this right that's what and I I, I, um, I wasn't thinking along those terms but do you want to uh, I could um, I just said to Maureen well, we should set the time for the pre-meeting at 6.30. Would it be smarter to make it 6.15 and then make this, take this vote that night? I, I mean, I hate doing that, but um, I don't know. What's, what's your pleasure? What do you want? Do you want the three of us to vote and then revisit it if we have to, or, or what? Or not vote. Vote or not vote? If we're not yeah. taking a position, we're not voting? I guess, it, yes. Is that what you're asking? If we don't vote, we're not taking a position. Or if we're not taking a position, we're not voting. Right. <laughs> you right. said it a little backwards I, th I there. think both are true. Oh, OK. Um, Though we'll, ve we'll revisit it the night of October 1st before the meeting. But do we need more time is what you're asking at that meeting? Or you're asking the first question first. I'm, I'm sticking with my position. Yeah. I'm not going to take a vote tonight. So, um, so you don't want to take a vote tonight? I, I <coughs> am not going to take a position tonight, so whatever that results in, whatever action that results in, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to do? Do you want to take a vote tonight? I would say no. What I'm more than happy to do is I'll, I am definitely going to, I'll say, dwell on your concept a little bit, as well as give the full board a chance to discuss it as we you know, as you already mentioned, the other ones that we can revisit those prior to the meeting, should we want to, and this will allow um, the full board to consider it rather than. So, three two of the three of us um, either don't want to take a position or don't want to vote, or sort of the same thing. So, I guess we're not going. So, we're not going to vote tonight. And I will, if it's okay with you guys, I will post the meeting for six fifteen. I know that's sometimes problematic. Can you do that? I, I mean, it's one night I can, unless all hell breaks loose, okay. I should be able to do that. Okay. Um, and that will give our two missing colleagues a chance to weigh in anyway. Okay. So, so can I just ask a question, though, on your point about getting yeah. into the whole um, electorate? So you, one might assume that the people that come to the town meeting are coming because they have a strong opinion on this you're anticipating that they will vote to approve a ban no i mean i'm not anticipating it i'm 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 hoping they do that's your personal opinion it's both um i'm hoping they do because my personal opinion is that i think a ban would be better for the town but beyond that whether it's yay or nay I think the decision should be made by the bigger election. So that's my question. So if the it would only go to the bigger election, I just need to understand yeah. this while because like Tom, I will be thinking about this. If the vote is to approve this ban, yes, it goes to the election. So to be more specific, it will be on the ballot no matter what. 
Correct. But if if it so special let me just finish town, my question. Yes. So, if the vote is to not approve the ban, does it get voted on by the electorate? It does, but it doesn't mean it. Doesn't mean it. Right. It's moot. So if it's it's moot. Thank you. So it only goes to the population of, of Stowe if town meeting approves the ban. It only goes to it in a meaningful way. Correct. All right. So that I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we have a plan. We yep. have a plan. Okay. And. And one of the things to go along with it, too, is because these are in the form of zoning articles. They require two-thirds. Right. All of the prohibitions have been written as zoning articles. On town council's advice. Yes. So hold on. Let me just make sure I got that. The big zoning article you knew anyway. I believe. Okay, so on the ballot question, it references the zoning bylaw on the town meeting. Yes. Warrant it Correct. does not. So that was a good point to make. Right. The 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 the, the controlling zoning bylaw, you know, oh, that puts in the regulations, requires town meeting approval only. No, my, that was my mistake. It says it in both. Yeah. Article 3, I was looking at 2. Never right. Mind. Okay. So, so it does say it in both. Yes. So everything, uh, I'm not so sure about the tax, but the tax is 50%. It's 50%. The, the zoning bylaw, Article 1, and all the prohibitions in order to pass have to be approved by two thirds. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That makes it clear now. I guess one of your other questions was whether we need to have a post a meeting after town meeting for amending anything. Do we need to do that or was our motion earlier flexible enough that we don't have to have that? When we're done discussing things on, on, on at seven o'clock on, on Oh then you'll decide. We'll just continue to the meeting. Oh okay. We won't adjourn. Very good. That makes sense. We'll just continue to the okay. end of town meeting. Good. Thank you. Okay. So um all we have to do now are liaison reports. Is there any, anything? No. Great. Um, apple season is going well. Um, no, no major issues. Everybody's uh, working well together. Police, fire, all the orchards. Everybody's doing well. Um, we've had three meetings of the town hall renovation committee already. We are now fully up to. Uh, we have seven voting members that are all sworn in, so we have a full complement. And we had narrowed down the 12 applications that were put in for services to three, and we are doing the three, or we're doing the final uh, vetting of those three this Thursday. We're starting at 6 o'clock and going till we choose one. Good. We've got, we've scheduled an hour for each candidate to come in um, and uh, it'll be, a, it'll be good times. But, um, so we are moving along. Um, committee's working well together. Doug's obviously an asset and uh, um, we, we've got a good group of folks. So I'm, um, uh, I'm happy with how things are going along right now. So okay. hopefully the next meeting I'll be telling you that uh, uh, Bill will be in negotiations with uh, our selected candidate. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's good enough. Um, Planning Board's Lower Village Subcommittee met last Thursday um, and we had seen samples of what are called marketability studies, so the idea is you hire a consultant who tells you what kinds of businesses might be interested in Lower Village given its infrastructure, given its location, things like that. Um, and they, they look at, there's all kinds of data out there about purchases. They look at what people in our area within a mile, two miles, four miles, they look at what they buy 
uh, they compare that to what's available and they have what's called, I think it's called the leakage. How much stuff and what kind of stuff are people not buying in Lower Village? Um, and then of that universe, what can you have in a place like Lower Village with its infrastructure? It's really interesting. Um, and we're also going to do a field trip to a couple of other towns that have similar challenges with lack of public water uh, or where shopping malls have solved it on their own um, by sinking one public water supply. Are we still pursuing up the town additional well in the back there for this lower village? That's a really good question. Um, we're trying to facilitate conversations between the three landowners. One of them is very interested and the lower village sub discussions have gotten that have gotten him more interested and Jesse said he was going to try to keep that going um, unknown how interested the other two are um, personally I believe it remains a very viable solution that at least needs to be explored a lot more thoroughly than anyone has and then we just did get the new parcel behind linear retail oh which is open space with a provision right. for a well. Right. So that's another possibility. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's where that stands. Um, that's all I have. So is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn? You should let her make a motion. I don't know about, I'm mm. no expert on that. I, th I think withdrawn. she wants to make a motion. No, no, that's <laughs> he, he made it, I'll second it. <laughs> You don't want to break the pattern. Motion has been made and signaled to adjourn. We stand adjourned. Thank you.